It's around this table in Kazakhstan's capital, Astana, that Iran and Russia have been forging a new strategic alliance in the Middle East. And along with Turkey, the two powers have taken the lead in Syria's peace talks, mainly because the United States' influence in the region has waned. On the streets of Aleppo, the posters of four leaders loom large. Iranian Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khamenei, Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah, Assad and Russian President Vladimir Putin. They formed a new strategic alliance after Syria's military, mainly with the help of Russian airstrikes, defeated the anti-government rebels in Aleppo. By letting Russian warplanes use one of its military bases to launch strikes on Syria, Iran grew ever closer to Assad's fellow Shiite regime. And now Iran and Russia find themselves firm allies too. Syria's conflict is clearly sectarian. The Shiite regimes of Syria, Iraq and Iran on one side and the Sunni regimes of the Persian Gulf as well as Turkey and Jordan on the other. It's also progressed from a regional to an international conflict as Russia supports the Shiites and America the Sunnis. Then there's Israel's involvement. Its president, Benjamin Netanyahu, views Iran as Israel's arch enemy. And earlier this month, he met with Putin, telling him that there can never be peace in Syria whilst Iran has a presence there. Meanwhile, sophisticated weapons are flowing into the region, changing the military balance there. Here is Iran showing off its Russian-made S-300 missiles on state TV. Ten years after agreeing a deal for their delivery with Russia, Iran finally got hold of them last year. But there's also other sides to the new Tehran-Moscow alliance. Both rely on large energy reserves to keep their economies well oiled, and neither want to see energy prices fall even further than they have. And both are fervently anti-Western on the international stage, a message which goes down well with most Iranians and Russians, for now at least.